I make comedy shows about science with Helen Oni and Matt Parker as Festival of the Spoken Nerd. Our most recent show is out now on DVD. The others like to do their music and maths things, but I like to stick to actual science. To celebrate the release of the DVD, I'm sharing a section of the show here on YouTube where I help win an argument using temperature outside an aeroplane. So we've obviously got quite a nerdy audience, so you, you might be able to sympathise with this. I often get uh, emails from friends and family asking me to fix something that isn't working. Do you get that? <laughs> and, uh, so I'm, honestly, I'm just like, no, I... I don't know why you can't print, <laughs> you know. And more importantly, I don't care, uh, you know. And, uh, but sometimes I get emails that I quite like. Maybe it's a science question instead of a, a question about a bloody printer. Um, I got a, a question recently from uh, someone saying, can you help me to win an argument? I was like, yeah, this is amazing. This is what the question I've been waiting for. Uh, so he, was, um, he was reading a book with his daughter. It was a kid's book that he got as a gift. Uh, from his in-laws. It was a science book full of facts. And one of the facts was that the temperature outside an aeroplane is six times colder than the temperature inside a freezer. And, okay, wow. Um, and the way you're supposed to read this book, I think, is you're supposed to go, temperature outside an aeroplane. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> what my friend did was get into an argument with his in-laws. <laughs> He thought that this statement was like ambiguous or hard to interpret or meaningless or something like that. There was a problem with it. And, uh, but he couldn't articulate it because the in-laws were just like, look, inside a freezer is cold. Outside an airplane is six times colder than that. All right? Can we just have dinner? <laughs> and, but the thing is, I agree with my friend. I think he's right. I think there's a problem with this statement. So I said, I'll help you out. Uh, and because you said, look, I, I can't articulate. I've just got this sense that there's a problem with it. I can't articulate it. So can you help me to explain it to these people? <laughs> so I, I spoke to him on the phone. I was trying to explain what was going on with this statement. I wasn't, it, it wasn't really getting across. So I said, look, I tell you what, I'll come round. <laughs> In fact, actually... Um, let me know when your in-laws are next coming round, <laughs> and I'll come round then. <laughs> and so they invite me round for dinner, which you might think is awkward, given that my main purpose for being there was to prove some people wrong. <laughs> but it's all right, because I put a PowerPoint presentation together, <laughs> and, uh, and I can show it to you now. This is it. Uh, so I said, look, well, well, first of all, the, the, the big problem with this statement, let's get that out of the way, is that we're all outside an aeroplane now, and it's not that cold. <laughs> In fact, my freezer is outside an aeroplane, so that's... <laughs> also, some aeroplanes have freezers on them. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at that. Um, <laughs> I said, OK, but let's be generous and assume that the statement means that the temperature immediately outside an aeroplane at cruising altitude in the middle of the day in temperate climates is six times colder than the temperature inside a freezer. So let's write that down formally. The temperature... <laughs> outside an airplane is six times colder than the temperature inside a freezer. It's a very simple statement. It's similar to a statement like Alice is six times taller than Bob or Callum is six times shorter than Debbie. Really simple statements that are easy to interpret. <laughs> or are they? <laughs> Well, let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the uh, Alice and Bob statement. Suppose Bob is half a meter tall. How tall is Alice? Three meters, yeah? Everyone knows because, right, six times means multiply by six. So if Bob is half a meter tall, Alice is three meters tall. That's how tall Alice is, right? right? What about uh, Callum and Debbie? Suppose Debbie is a meter tall. How tall is Callum? Well, we already know this. Six times means multiply by six. So uh, a meter multiplied by six is six meters. So Callum is six meters shorter than Debbie. All right, that's how tall Callum is. <laughs> you see, just because a statement is simple doesn't mean it has a simple interpretation. It's a nonsense statement, right? So the question is, is the statement about the temperature outside an airplane an Alice and Bob type statement 
or a Callum and Debbie type statement? Well, let's uh, look at it on the Calvin scale. So on the Calvin scale, you have zero. It's similar to, um, to height. You have zero, but you can't go below that for height and uh, Calvin. So let's put that on that line there. If the temperature inside a freezer is like the height of Debbie, then the temperature outside an airplane is six times colder than that, and it's down there. Um, so that can't happen, right? That's nonsensical. You can't do that. You can't have a temperature below z- absolute zero. There's nothing colder than that. So my friend is right. Because <laughs> then the in-law said, no, no, no. That's not what the statement means. The statement means that the temperature outside an airplane is a sixth of the temperature inside a freezer. And I said, well, I mean, if that's not ambiguous, I don't know what is. <laughs> but let's just assume that it means that. So what you're saying is the temperature outside an airplane is a sixth of the temperature inside a freezer. Does that work in practice? Well, the temperature inside a freezer is minus 18 degrees centigrade. That's the recommended temperature inside a freezer. So that's 255 Kelvin, meaning that the temperature outside an airplane must be a sixth of that. 255 divided by 6, 42 Kelvin. <laughs> The temperature at which oxygen solidifies. (laughs) Maybe that's how planes fly. (laughs) Notice my clever use of humour there. Uh, It's a rhetorical device. Um, And uh, and they said, no, 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 it's not the Calvin scale. It's the centigrade scale. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) Steve's in trouble now, isn't he? No, I thought about that. And I had some slides. Let's have a look at the centigrade scale. Yeah, the centigrade scale is interesting because on the centigrade scale, the temperature inside a freezer is below zero and the temperature outside an aeroplane is even more below zero. Maybe it's six times more below zero. Maybe it is an Alice and Bob type statement, so long as colder means further below zero. So let's find out if it works. The temperature inside a freezer is minus 18 degrees centigrade. The temperature outside an aeroplane, I looked this up, Cruising altitude, temperate climates, middle of the day, minus 55 degrees centigrade. So, is minus 55 six times minus 18? No, fuck no. No, it's not. (laughs) 3.06, which actually is a a pretty decent approximation to pi, if you wanted to use it for that. (laughs) Scientists. In fact, scientists uh, uh, believe that that was the original definition. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, they said, they, said, they said, no, 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 no. It's not the centigrade scale. It's the Fahrenheit scale. God, they're clutching at straws now. On the Fahrenheit scale, the temperature outside an airplane is minus 67 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature inside a freezer, the recommended temperature is zero. <laughs> So the temperature outside an aeroplane is infinitely colder. <laughs> like, that's a better fact, isn't it? That's a, they should have put that in the book. That's amazing. Because, I mean, all of this is nonsense. None of this, because this is all assuming that coldness starts at zero on whichever scale you're using. Like, coldness doesn't start at zero degrees Fahrenheit. It doesn't start at zero degrees centigrade. It's already cold by then, isn't it? But hey, then it got me thinking, maybe the authors of the book have been really clever. And what they've done is they've chosen the temperature at which they feel that coldness starts. <laughs> right? and, they've, and they've noticed that the temperature inside a freezer is below that and that the temperature outside an aeroplane is more below it than that, and that it's six times more below it. But here's the great thing. Because we've got all the numbers, we can work out the temperature (laughs) at which the authors of the book believe that coldness starts. Here's the equations, right? Look, if you take the temperature at which coldness starts, according to the authors of the book, and subtract the temperature inside a freezer, and then do the same with the temperature outside an aeroplane, these two numbers are related in this simple way. One is six times the other, according to the author. So let's substitute in the values we have. Minus 55 uh, and minus 18 become plus 55 and plus 18. We can simplify the equation. 5 multiplied by the temperature at which coldness starts is minus 53 degrees centigrade. Divide both sides by 5. The temperature at which coldness starts, according to the authors of the book, is minus (laughs) 10.6 degrees centigrade. Finally, right? (laughs) My friend is right. And then this is the point where the non-nerds out-nerded the nerd, right? Because the in-laws said to me, no. (laughs) Look up the authors of the book. So I did. And they're Canadian. (laughs) Thanks very much.
To watch the rest of the show, grab a copy of the DVD or you can download it from all the usual places. Link in the description. Oh, and you can also get the show on floppy disk because Helen thinks she's hilarious. To watch some more of the show for free, head over to Matt's channel where he's also put a section online. To celebrate the release of the DVD, I'm sharing a section of the show here on YouTube where I help edit live footage using projections outside of a sphere. To so do, do watch, watch Matt's Steve's video, video and, and if you can afford, afford it, would love it if you could buy the show. The, the download, download costs just, just half pounds, pounds or even less if you're, if you're a Patreon, Patreon supporter. supporter.